I was sitting there listening, and I forgot I'm going to speak. I'm getting so excited when we talk about innovation. It's something that、um, in the past twenty years, people say, "Jack, what are you doing?" I call myself innovation, but most people say you are crazy. You are doing something never exist. And I,、um, I'm very, very honored to be invited here today.、Um, I think I want to say. Great congratulations for this great innovation center, the opening. I met Simon Paris, I think, ten years ago in Davos. I listened to his speech. His determination for innovation, leadership, courage, inspired me. I would say many of the things that Alibaba doing that needs courage, needs determination, needs leaderships. So I think he is with us all the time, and I think. This innovation center is also a gift for the 70th anniversary of Israel. Four months ago, I came to Israel. This is my first trip to Israel. I came with seven, 37 Alibaba senior executives. Why we came here? We got a lot of invitations, but the reason we came here because we had a huge debate among ourselves because of the competition, because of the pressure. Because of all these things that are around us, the anxiety, and I say, let's go to Israel. When you are there, you know what competition means. When you are there, you know when the people surrounded you, how you can survive. And after after four days, visited the government, companies, venture capitalists, and a lot of entrepreneurs, we learned two things. First. Is innovation. Second is who's back. <laughs> the courage to challenge, and we find in Israel innovation is everywhere. It's just like people. It's just like water. It's just like a food. It's so natural. And I think to not discuss about innovation is the innovation in Israel. People here all talk about this. In the past seventy years, for my experience, for for what we learn. That Israel people proved one thing: even you have nothing, you have anything, right? You don't have anything, but if you have brain, if you have heart, you can make everything possible. <laughs> For my understanding, brain is the place where you hold the knowledge, education, training. The heart is the place where you hold the wisdom. And IQ is the brain, and EQ is the heart. If you have a strong EQ, you may be easy to be successful. But people like you. You have a value. You have a friendship. You have trust. But if you have great IQ, it's very difficult for you to fail quickly. A lot of people easy to get success, but losing very quickly. That because they don't have enough IQ. When IQ and EQ connected, that means when brain and heart connected, that is the knowledge and wisdom connected. That is called innovation. And I believe that if you want to be successful, you should have the good EQ. If you don't want to fail quickly, you should have IQ. But if you want to be respected, you should have LQ, the Q of love. And Israel. Has all these things. Israel has the best education systems. I had a wonderful discussion with the Minister of Education. I learned a lot, and I think this is the treasure. Israel is the country. They know the most precious resource in the world is not oil, it's not gas, it's the human brains. You make the human brains great, and Israel also have the great life experience that very few countries in this world have. You combine these things together. And that is the secret source of magic of Israel's success. I'm very happy to hear that today the innovation is for better life, and this is Israel innovate not only for himself, not only for Israel. Israel innovate for humans, for the world, and this is the exact LQ we need. Today I come here to discuss by innovation. Where the idea come from? And people say, Jack, after 19 years and you know being an Alibaba founder and a CEO, what 
what, what you've got. People say, you got rich. I think the wealth I've got is that I've known and seen, met so many great people in the world. I remember one story. After Second World War, a grandson asked grandfather, Grandfather, you joined the war. So are you a hero in the war? The grandfather said, No, I'm not the hero, but I have the honor to work with and fight together with all the heroes. I'm lucky enough in the past 19 years, I have the honor to meet so many great leaders and make so many great entrepreneurs, innovators. I think from them, I have the honor. This is my wealth, and I want to share with you. Most of innovations, not because they want to, because they were forced to. Israel, there's no water, no oil, no resources. And most people innovate for success. And I find Israel people innovate for survive. You don't have diamond, but you have the biggest diamond exchange in the world. And you don't have, you don't make cars, but you have the best car technology in the world. You don't have water. And I heard, I was first time, four months I heard that you are one of the biggest export of vegetables and fruits to the Europe. And you don't have water. That's amazing. And the other thing is that Alibaba, you know, people say, Jack, you are amazing. How could you make such a huge investment in nine years ago to develop, develop cloud computing? And you know nothing about technology. That is true. I know nothing about technology. I'm scared of technology. So I was the first te the, te the product tester of my company. Because I said, if I can use it, 80% of people can use it. If I cannot use it, 80% don't want to use it. So nine years ago, I know if we do not develop technology on cloud computing, Alibaba will bankrupt because we cannot afford the cost of IBM and Oracle. The cost of using this IT is so too expensive for us. So we have to innovate. We have to design a technology that is simple enough. If we can use that technology simple and cost effective, not only for Alibaba, it's also going to support millions of small business. That was, we were forced. And the other thing is that, you know, we have 11-11. November 11 is the largest shopping day of China. Last year, for the first minute of November 11, we had 80 million people came in for the one sec, first second. With that good technology, our company will bankrupt immediately. We sold more than $24 billion last year for one day. This year, we don't know how much we will sell for one night. It's the technology behind it. So we were forced to do that. And today, a lot of people say, oh, young people have no opportunities. I think that, that, that thing I've heard for 40 years. When I was young, I, oh, I hate Bill Gates because I think Microsoft take all the opportunity. IBM, Oracle, they take all the opportunity. But later I found, when people start to complain, that is the opportunity. Most people keep on complaining. If you can solve the complaining, if you solve the problems, and that is the opportunity. Innovation is the way to solve anxiety, worries, unsatisfaction. Innovation is for happier life. So we believe through the innovation, you can grasp the opportunity of the grasp the opportunity for success. The first technology revolution released the physical power of human beings. The second technology revolution released the distance, and this is the third technology revolution relates the human brains. Human beings, like uh, Prime Minister said yes last night, we never satisfied with today. And the, the way to make yourself to change, to change yourself, to embrace this challenge is called innovation. And I would like to say, who are those kind of innovation, innovative people? Who are these kind of people? I would say those innovators, they look like crazy, stupid, lazy, and even liars. When we started Alibaba, I tell the story about I went to Silicon Valley raising funds. 
I talk to over 30 venture capitalists. They say, ah, crazy. Alibaba, stupid, crazy name. And e-commerce e in China won't work because China has no internet. China has a censorship, no credit card, no deliver, nothing else. So they think it's impossible to make. They think, Jack, you are coming here to, te to, to, to tell a lie. But we believe China has the future. We believe internet is going to change the China. And at that time, e-commerce in America style is only supported big companies. We believe small business. And people say, small business, they don't make money. How could you make money from them? They're right. We say, if small business in America, e-commerce for big companies, helping big companies to cut the cost. We think helping small companies not to teach them how to cut the cost because they know better than you do. You should help them how to make the money. And washing machine. A lot of, lot of things are designed for lazy people. Yeah, people don't want to wash, they have a washing machine. People don't want to climb, they have the elevators. Uh, even the iPhone came, a lot of experts of telephone said, how could this stupid thing, there is no even press buttons. When Bell started to sell his telephones, a new, famous newspaper in America tell the policeman, please arrest that guy because he's cheating the people. So innovation, innovative people are believers. Most people seeing is believing. People like us, we believe and we seal it. Innovation, innovators, they are not one person. They are a group of people. So when you invest in money in somebody, you should see, do this guy, does this guy have followers? If you have a group of people who are crazy like him, that would be great. I remember early 2000, I went to the United States to talk about, uh, make my speech about internet in the future in China. I believe internet population in China will be bigger than the USA. People say, ah, that is not true. Uh, my reason was very simple. China have 1.4 billion people. USA have only 300 million people. Make everybody online, you know, 300 million, right? So China has a huge potential for that. But one of the guys said, Jack, what you're talking about, internet company should have values and mission. That is crazy. And I say, sir, please come to my company. So I came to Hangzhou, my company, spent one week, and the day he left, he said, Jack, I know you're crazy, but I found 100 people in your companies, they're all crazy. <laughs> crazy people don't think they're crazy. They think people outside they're crazy. So, and most of the innovators are not very successful people because successful people are very difficult to change. I never try to convince successful people. They will tell you how they succeed, they will continue to do this. Those people who don't succeed, they always want to succeed. So one of the reasons why Alibaba succeed 20 years ago, we never try to convince those people who are successful. We try to spend time on the people who are 18 years ago, 20 years old, they are not successful. So 20 years later, they become successful, we become successful. That is how we did it. Now most of the people who buy online, they are 35 to 40. 10, 20 years ago, they only spent $2. Now they spent $3,000. That is the difference. Innovation has nothing to do with the technology. Technology is just a way to do When we talk about innovation, everybody says, ah, high technology. It's not about that. Techno innovation, everybody can do it. Right. Those people who do not know anything like technology, like me, we can find those people, rely on these people, try those people who have the technology. In our site, our Alibaba site, there's a one guy selling shoes 48 inches only. And I say, how can this guy sell shoes for 48 inches? And we find out he's very innovative because people with 48 inches feet Difficult for him to buy shoes in the shops. There's only one on the, on the online. <laughs> and there are a lot of innovative ways. Those guys design, lazy guys, you know, they watch TV lying on the sofa. So they design a specific glass that you can lie on the, on the sofa, watch the, uh, on the TV. They sell perfectly. And there are also some guys helping people to write letters to say goodbye to boyfriends and girlfriends, and writing resign letters to bosses. There are a lot of cra crazy, interesting ideas. They are all wonderful sellers. 
And most of the innovations today are only talk. Innovation, they think, is an idea. Entrepreneurs make the innovation reality. So we have to share a real entrepreneur have to believe in the future, have to suffer, have to re be ready for the terrible lives in the future. So we think, I believe everybody has the ability of innovation. But you just don't spend the time to discover that. And the lastly, very important, is the government. Now, we are entering into a new world. This world is going to be very complex, very disrupted, and every technology revolution caused world problem. The first technology revolution caused World War I. The second technology revolution caused World War II. Now we are into the third technology revolution. We, don't, we should not have a third world war. But if there is a third world war, it should be the war against the poverty, disease, and environment. These are the things that human beings should fight together and work together. A government should to, to lead, not to govern. The government should empower and protect the innovation, not control the innovation. And I think the best investment for tomorrow is education. In the past 20 years, we make... Thank you. In the past 20 years, we make people like machines. Next 20 years, we will make machines like people. You like or don't like it, we have to change ourselves. This thing is coming. How, what we should do to change our education systems, to teach our kids they can do the things the machine cannot do. This is the thing. It's concerning to every family and every government should pay attention to that. And I think government should also encourage entrepreneurships. I really appreciate Prime Minister yesterday talk about entrepreneurs. It's the entrepreneurships that make ideas reality. Innovation is always going to be destroyed of yesterday. A lot of people who are successful yesterday will not like it. So government should know what not to do. Let me tell you one story. In, 19, in 1860s, when UK had first the cars, the cars came in, automobile coming, they destroyed a lot of jobs of these horsemen. Horsemen at that time are the main jobs of the society. These are white collar people. They went to the government, pushed the government, say, you should stop these cars because they're going to kill people on the road. It's going to destroy the jobs. So the government passed a law called Red Flag Bill. They do not allow any car drive faster than seven miles, seven miles per hour. And they should always follow behind the horses. That stop it. Protect the people for some group of people's interest, but destroy the whole in industry. And the other thing, innovation is interesting, and it's also going to stop by a lot of people. People don't like it. I went to the Museum of Basketball. You know, basketball used to have a basket. People threw the ball inside, and with a ladder to take the ball out. This thing has been last for 18 years. And there's one guy said, why not cut the bottom? And it will be easier. It's a great idea. Much more, basketball become more competitive, but people hate it. It's the people who hate it the most were the guy who wins the ladder. He said, I'm losing my job. So this is what I want to say. People start to worry. Artificial intelligence, robots, jobs. But don't worry about it. Human beings are much smarter than machines. Machine can never control because machine only have chips. Human beings have the hearts. I remember 1995 when I studied, studied internet in China. There is a big meeting, there is a small meeting among 24 people in Beijing in the evening for discussing for three hours. There are a lot of experts start to discuss about the internet. They think internet is going to destroy this, destroy that. A lot of worries. They think government should control it. Almost 22 years passed. Those things we worried never come up. Those things we did not worry all came up. And I want to say, don't worry about the future. Young people, don't worry about the future. And don't worry about the 
the, the size of the machine, I think small business don't worry about because small business believe small is powerful, small is beautiful. Using innovation, small business can compete anybody in the world. And this is just like Israel. The small is beautiful and small is powerful. So my view is that rely on the young people. Rely on the small business. Believe the future. Be optimistic. The world is beautiful. Today is just the beginning. But anything, remember, this is my philosophy of life the past 20 years. Today is difficult. Tomorrow is much more difficult. But day of tomorrow is beautiful. Most people die tomorrow evening. Thank you very much.